My next guest remains neutral on stocks, says don't fear the mo momentum trade. Joining me now, Post 9, Sebastian Page of T. Rowe Price. Good to see you. Likewise. Glad you're here at Post 9. So you're neutral. You're still neutral on U.S. stocks. Why? You know, enthusiastically neutral on my <laughs> application. Wait, wait. So yeah. from reluctantly <laughs> bearish to now enthusiastically neutral? Convincingly, aggressively neutral. You know, the reason why I mention this is as asset allocators, we do a lot of work on strategic asset allocation. And mm -hmm. you had Josh talking about this a little bit. Why not stick to your strategic asset mix and be invested in the way that matches your risk preferences? So that's why I say enthusiastically, aggressively neutral. I, it's like on your show on my asset allocation committee. I have bulls and I have bears, and we have the debate. Why are you right and, in the uh, middle? I mean, what, why, what's preventing you from, from being more bullish? Yeah, let's look at the. So you want, if you want me to make the bearish case, primarily the bears on the committee are looking at two things that are worrisome. Of course, high valuations, but it's not just high valuations. It's high valuations with upward pressures on the 10-year, so rising rates. So you're starting to see that. The, yeah. yeah. But the bears have been wrong. Yes, yes. And look, the bulls, very simple thesis, right? Rising earnings mm -hmm. and declining interest rates. So that's how you end up in the middle. Yeah, I mean, you didn't mention anything about solid economic growth, right? Yeah. So it's like good earnings, growth remains solid, and there's no reason to believe that the Fed's not going to cut as its next move, correct? Uh, I think there's some doubts starting to surface on that. Only in the uh, timing. Yeah, I think so. I think the longer term direction of rates is down, but it could take longer. I do think the upward pressure on inflation is real, and that makes investors nervous. Um, look, you know, the bullish thesis is still intact. It's just high valuations. And I think you've had quite a few guests talk about, you know, waiting for a pullback to add more to become more aggressive. But if the That's bullish kind of narrative, if you say the bullish narrative is still intact, I don't get the feeling from our many conversations that you're in any way bullish. No, we're neutral, right? So if you think about the pressure on rates and how it's making the markets n nervous right now, and the fact that valuations are high, we've had a really good run in stocks. Where we'd rather be invested is at our strategic weight and also position for market broadening. Look, Scott, I, I think stocks will do okay as the main base case. I think credit will do okay, mm -hmm. but the risk is to the downside. So just stay invested in a way that matches your risk tolerance. But if Don't I'm, take more risk than usual, is uh, what I'm saying. That's fair, but I mean, if, I, if I'm sort of worried about the impact of, you know, higher for longer, Right? Maybe they don't hike it all this year. And what what are the impacts are, are going to be on all of that? How are you then advocating for a broadening market? You know, the, there are many ways the market can broaden. I think it's more likely to broaden towards large cap value stocks than towards small. We're actually neutral now between small and large. But we are long value and we're adding to value. There's a valuation case to be long value. You're in the sort of bottom quintile of the price earnings ratio relative to growth. Mm -hmm. If you look historically, you get five to seven percent value outperformance historically on average for the next 12 months. That's OK. But as you often say, Scott, Valuation is only one part of the picture. You need a catalyst. I think there are catalysts for value stocks on the fundamentals, earnings accelerating for value relative to growth, on macro, higher commodity prices, and just pressure on rates. What, what, when, you say, when you say value stocks, large cap value stocks, put that into practice right. for my viewers. Like what? So we like energy stocks. We like uh, technology in the value space, which is interesting and attractively valued. And those are stocks that if you look towards the end of the year, by the end of the year, the consensus is that because of some easier comparables, value earnings will actually grow faster than growth earnings, believe it or not. That's what is kind of baked in right now and could maybe surprise parts of the markets. And the one last thing I wanted to say, the other catalyst for value is sentiment. You know, value's been unloved. 92nd percentile in terms of flows into growth funds mm -hmm. relative to value over the last year. So you have a coiled spring of valuation and you have some fundamental macro and sentiment catalysts that are starting to take, take shape. So the way you do it is you rebalance, right? Growth is rallying, you rebalance into value, and you start to increase your target tactically. Good to catch up with you. Thanks Likewise, for being here. Likewise, thank you. Yeah, Sebastian Page joining us from T. Rowe.